rise and shine beautiful beings notice i have the beautiful queen jamie with me today well i brought her on board today especially for this topic okay today my message is to all single mothers now this message is it can be easily received by all women though and by the end of the video you're gonna see why okay you ever notice that when you have a fatherless child when that child grows up and displays negative behavior, the fatherless child is often blamed for the negative child's behavior. Hence, if the father had been in his life, they wouldn't turn out this way. Well, that's potentially true. But I want you guys to understand how when you master your femininity, not even a father abandoning his children will be the doom of your child. OK, we believe that in order for your man to be the most masculine, the woman must master her feminine. And in order for the woman to be fully feminine the man must master his masculine okay mm -hmm. so we want to talk to you guys today about always practicing your femininity if you are a single mother and you have a son instead of talking at your son when he disappoints you whenever they're disobedient encourage your son mm -hmm. so let's just say your son misbehaves instead of saying i know you didn't just do that who you talking to like that i don't care if you get big as a house i will knock your head off right? When you talk to your child like that, you're actually preparing them for how they're going to be treated in the future. So if they have another woman come into their life talking to them that way, they won't see it as a red flag. They'll actually likely see it as loving. It's kind of the same way when a woman is beat on as a child or whipped as a child, a man who, who exerts physical violence towards her, it comes off now as love, increasing the chances of Stockholm syndrome. You understand? So you don't want to trauma bond your child early in life simply because you're trying to train them. Don't be masculine in that moment. Still be feminine. So instead of threatening your child, motivate your child, encourage your child, find positive ways to make your child want to be better. You understand? You know what mama really likes to see you do? And then you say the thing you want them to do more of. Man, when I see your room is clean, it just makes me so happy. It makes me just want to do something nice for you. I'm, I'm going to bring you back some ice cream today. I'm going to bring you back something nice today, right? These type of things will make this child say, I love my mother's validation. I love to put a smile on her face. Let me give her more of that. You understand? Now, let's just say you have a daughter, okay? A daughter who, um, who is fatherless. How do you teach her to remain in her feminine? Okay, let's just say you have a brother. Have her empower and motivate your brother. Have her empower and motivate her grandfather. If, you, if her father isn't in her life, have her to pour into her grandfather, have him to see the value in him, learning that her femininity lies in empowering her male counterparts. Mm -hmm. She will always, if she has a brother, have her to empower her brother. Mm -hmm. teach, your, teach your son to be masculine towards his sister. He must always protect her. Teach your daughter to cook and even prepare the plate for your brother. Teach your, uh, for, for, I mean, for her brother, which is your son. Mm -hmm. right. See, this is what you do to always teach your children to be masculine and feminine. You understand? Mm -hmm. A lot of times we think we need a man to come and teach a boy how to be a man. But I want you to understand something. Life will teach a boy how to be a man. Mm -hmm. A lot of times a man won't know any, any way how to be a father or any way how to do anything. But as soon as he has a child, even if he was ill prepared, a lot of men will step up. Mm -hmm. You understand? So I want you guys to understand you can take a man who's ill prepared for life. And if you are truly in your femininity, you can turn him into a king by being feminine, by mastering your feminine. You understand? A lot of times men haven't had the best called out of them, so they don't know what's in them. They don't know that they have a potential that they have to maximize. They think that who they are today, they will always be because that's how they've been spoken to. They've never had anybody to empower them, likely. And a lot of times if you're a single mother and you're out here trying to take on life, what happens is you become masculine trying to survive. You should never be in that place to, be, to have to be masculine. But if you are, always try and remain feminine when dealing with your children. See, when you're in survival mode, it's hard for you to be the, the best nurturer that you can be. But try to never leave that position when dealing with your future selves. These are your children. So always practice being feminine, even when you have to tap into your masculine energy. It's there for when you need to survive. But always know that your femininity is what you want to lead with. You understand? So get your money. But when it comes to you and your child, you have a child there that you can maximize the potential in. And regardless of who's in their life, you can still help them fulfill their best potential if you continue to pour into them the right way. You understand? So I want all of you guys to keep these things in mind when dealing with your male and female counterparts. You understand? Always try to empower the man who does something kind for you. This is how you always remain in your femininity. If someone opens a door for you, say, oh, thank you so much, sir. You are so strong. You are so kind. Even if you're uninterested in him, 
because that confidence alone will make him do that for the next woman. It may give him that confidence and that masculinity to, to, to go be masculine for some other woman. A lot of times a man walks up to you and he's trying to do something nice for you. He's trying to be masculine. A lot of times he has no motivation behind that. And so simply allow him to be masculine. You're beautiful. He walked up to you because he wanted to do something nice for you. It helps him feel masculine. And it would also help you to tap into your feminine side. A lot of times, ladies, you'll say, don't do nothing for me. And basically what you're doing is you're staying in your feminine side by not allowing someone to take away the heavy lifting for you. You're a goddess and you got to recognize that. You're not here to heavy lift. You are here to motivate uh, the people to be the best that they can possibly be. So just imagine this. Men are the physical realm, okay? So we master our masculinity so we can go out and manifest the spiritual, the physical realm for you guys. You guys are the spiritual realm. You master the things that we can't see, the things that we can't lift up with our hands and open with our strong hands, like, um, like a motivation and security. These things are intangible, spiritual. They come from within. So that's, this is where the woman, she is really a, a superpower. She has, she's, she's really a superhero in that way because she can motivate this man. You understand? She can speak encouragement into him. And with that encouragement, he can even do more physically. So know your power. If you have a man that you're unwilling to, what you call cater to his ego, this means you're unwilling to be feminine. And you have to ask yourself, what am I afraid to lose? Why am I afraid to pour into this man? What do I lose? And it's likely because you haven't been practicing being feminine and that's where the block is. You understand? Right. Practice with your father. Go to your father and tell him the value that you see in him. Speak life into him. Go to your brother. See, in these ways, you have nothing to lose. You have nothing to lose by encouraging them. I'll tell you this. Jamie can tell you, and this is why I brought her on, is whenever she was first dealing with the boys, she would talk to them the way a typical mother would. You know, she'd talk at them, you know? And a lot of times she would see that she didn't get the best out of them, especially when she started motivating them and using these different tactics. And now they want to be great for her. They literally move totally different now when she's not talking at them. And she could see it that when she talks at them, it literally deflates them. It demotivates them, which is emasculating. If they're not motivated, because masculinity is motivation. It equals motivation and focus and drive and determination. Mm -hmm. If a person is depressed or emasculated, they won't put out much positive energy when it comes to manifesta ma manifestation. Mm -hmm. So you as mothers, your goal is to keep your child being the most productive they can be by pouring life into them. This prepares you for what you're going to do for your husband, your future husband, if you're now a single mother. Mm -hmm. If you're a wife and you're wondering how to encourage your husband, think of how you might encourage your child in a loving way. It, it's, it's generally the same. You speak into the better parts of them and encourage them to manifest to their future self, to their superior self. You encourage them uh, on, to do that by, by showing them how amazing they can possibly be, not just reminding them about what, they, what they've done. Here's another example. Let's say your child says, I'm going to be a millionaire one day. You could say, no, you not. You're going you're gonna to keep your room clean. The way you carry in yourself, you're going to end up not being nothing, just like your crazy daddy. Now you could, or, or you could say, now which one you think is better? Or you can say, son, I believe you can do anything you can put your mind to. I would just like to see you be steadfast a little bit more, stay focused a little bit more because you got it, baby. The only thing is sometimes you quit because you get discouraged. I would like to see you stay motivated because you have everything you need inside of you. I guarantee you he'll say, wait, wait a second. Hold, I like that. That's something he can build on. You know what I'm saying? And so this is something that you could say to your king. And it would also go over well. A lot of times you guys are just not delivering it while being in your feminine. It's not that the data is wrong or the information that you're giving him is wrong. It's that you're not presenting it in your feminine. And a lot of times if you are presenting it in your feminine and he's throwing it back at you or telling you that you're nagging, it's because he is not completely in his masculine, meaning he can't allow you to be in his feminine because he doesn't believe listening to a woman is masculine. He doesn't understand that his other partner represents his other set of eyes. And who else would you listen to? Listening to your wife doesn't make you weak. It makes you more prepared. See, women have better peripheral vision, meaning they can see around us. Men have better long distance vision. When she starts telling you what she sees around you, it makes you better prepared. So you can tell her about that line you see in the distance, but she can tell you about that snake she sees in the grass. See, trust your queen's intuition. And when she's giving that to you, kings, encourage it. Don't tell her she's nagging. And while you're practicing this, when she starts to give you information and and uh, and and um, let's say wisdom or guidance, you may start to feel this uncomfortable feeling in your stomach because she's highlighting your doubts or she's highlighting things that 
where you didn't know you were inadequate or things you didn't realize you didn't know. Embrace this because she's supposed to see the things that you don't see. Mm -hmm. She's supposed to. This isn't a shot at your ego. This isn't a shot at you as in your manhood. This is actually a highlight in her femininity that she was able to see something that you did not see. Mm -hmm. You understand? If you and your queen are both looking at a portrait and she doesn't see anything that you don't see, that might be bad, King. You want her to be able to see the things that you don't see. This is what makes you complete. Mm -hmm. You understand? You're looking for your counterpart. So always understand, family, if, as long as you're practicing your masculinity, she can be full. She can be fully in her feminine. And as long as she's working to master her feminine, it'll help you be full uh, be, be in your masculine completely. All right. So work together, family. If you don't do this on the back end, you might be one of those parents who's saying, man, this is damn daddy not being his life. That's his problem. Mm -hmm. But in reality, you're telling me that you couldn't bring the potential out of a child. Mm -hmm. And if you can't bring the potential out of a child, a little boy child, little man child, who's to say you can bring the potential out of a grown man? You understand? Mm -hmm. A mother can do but so much to, of, to a grown man. His wife takes over from that point and she continues it on and she helps him manifest to the best he can be. You understand? Please understand this, family. Know your power, queens. Never put your power down for what this matrix is telling you. Mm -hmm. Your value is in your spiritual realm. You were not made to be out here trying to conquer careers and letting that be your validation. You are spiritual realm, which means you are art. You are poetry. You are philosophy. You build the mind of the warrior. This is what makes the warrior complete. Notice they said in slavery, we want to keep the body, but destroy the mind. Queen, mm -hmm. you are the way we get our minds back. Mm -hmm. We got the brawn. Right. But if we don't have you doing the spiritual things, challenging us to make us look further, challenging us to make us study harder, showing us what we don't see, we will never maximize our full potential. Kings, your life is about maximizing your full potential. All right. Don't fall for the hype. Find you a queen who truly sees you and that is willing to pour into you to help you maximize your potential. Because mm -hmm. if you were to ever do that, you will help her maximize hers. Mm -hmm. It's yin and yang, baby. Not one of us gets there without the other if you work together. Mm -hmm. See, it takes two to tango. It takes two to make a baby. It takes two to leave an inheritance. And it takes two to have a happy relationship, right? I look at it like this. Women are like the calm in the ocean and men are like the waves. What do men always look for? Peace. So she is to provide that peace because a man lives in a chaotic life. Mm -hmm. If you go all the way back to our hunt and gathering days, a man can lose his life any day. Look at the mythological stories. Baal killed by a boar. Tam Tammuz killed by a wild boar. These stories are because it's really horrific out there hunting. Your life could be lost. You can get injured severely. You need a woman who got your back if you were ever injured. You understand? You need a woman who can speak life into you. You need a woman who understands these things. You understand? So just know, family, that in a, in a chaotic world, we need our queens to be our peace. We do. We can't be out here hunting and, and putting our lives on the line only to come back home and have to debate and argue further. Because then we won't get our rest and be at 100% to go out tomorrow and hunt again. When we bring that food to the porch, what we need you guys to do is bring it to the table. Because we now know we don't bring it to the table. We actually bring it to the house. It is y'all who learn how to, how to cook it till it's tender. How to season it until it tastes good. Half the time, if us hunters try to prepare our own meal, we wouldn't even know what we were doing. We would hate that meal. So the two work hand in hand. You bring the food to the, to the, to the house. She takes it and skins it. She prepares it. She seasons it just right, cooks it just right, and she serves you a meal. You eat that meal, and you have the energy to go back out and do it again tomorrow. Just think like that, family, in life. If your husband is doing his part, why are you not doing your part to replenish him and encourage him and nourish him? And if he's not doing his part, it's likely because you're not pouring into him to nourish him. He doesn't have the energy. He doesn't have, it's not yin and yang. The cycle is broken because someone stopped what they're supposed to be doing. Keep being feminine, okay? If your femininity does not help him be masculine, it may be time for some therapy or to move on. And if your, if your masculinity does not help her be feminine, it may be time for some therapy or to move on, family. All right. Be evolution. Be the change that you want to see. No candle loses its flame from lighting another. And if you were to ever find yourself in the middle of chaos. It is in that chaos that you find yourself. Oh, that's a fact. And when you do that, you can what? Right. That's right. Peace, family.